ناظرین آداب مولانا آزاد نیشنل اردو یونیورسٹی کے تعلیمی پروگرام میں آپ کا استقبال ہے عزیز طلبہ اپنی تعلیم مکمل کرنے کے بعد جب آپ ملازمت کے لیے فارم داخل کرتے ہیں اور جب انٹرویو کی باری آتی ہے تو اکثر طلبہ تھوڑے سے پریشان ہو جاتے ہیں لیکن اب آپ کو پریشان ہونے کی ضرورت نہیں انٹرویو کا سامنا کس طرح کرنا چاہیے کس طرح انٹرویو بورڈ کو وش کریں جب آپ کے بارے میں پوچھا جائے تو اپنے آپ کو کس طرح متعارف کروائیں انٹرویو کے دوران اپنی تعلیمی قابلیت پیشہ تجربہ اور اپنی فیملی کے بارے میں آپ بورڈ کو کس طرح واقف کرائیں گے اس پروگرام میں انہی باتوں کو اجاگر کیا گیا ہے عام طور پر انٹرویو میں پوچھے جانے والے سوالات کچھ اس طرح ہوتے ہیں ہماری آرگنائزیشن کے بارے میں آپ کیا جانتے ہیں یہ جاب آپ کیوں کرنا چاہتے ہیں آپ کے مشاغل کیا ہیں آپ کون سے کتب اور میگزین پڑھتے ہیں وغیرہ وغیرہ عزیز طلبہ انٹرویو کے دوران جس زبان میں سوال کیا جائے اسی میں جواب دیں نرم لیکن سب کو سنائی دینے والے لہجے میں بات کریں آسان انگریزی اور چھوٹے چھوٹے جملوں کا استعمال کریں خود اعتمادی کا مظاہرہ کریں صاف ستھرے کپڑے پہنیں اپنے کام کے تئیں رویہ چیلنجز کو قبول کرنا کچھ کر گزرنے کی خواہش کے اظہار سے انٹرویو بورڈ پر اچھا اثر پڑتا ہے یہ پروگرام ان تمام ناظرین کے لیے مفید ہے جو تلاش معاش میں انٹرویو کا سامنا کرنے والے ہیں آج کا ہمارا پروگرام ہے انٹرویو اسکلز جسے پیش کر رہی ہیں ڈاکٹر گلفشا حبیب ہیلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو مولانا آزاد نیشنل اردو یونیورسٹیز گلوبل کلاس روم ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از ایکسٹریملی امپارٹنٹ فار اوور اسٹوڈنٹس اٹ مے ناٹ بی آف امیڈیٹ یوز ٹو یو بٹ ایٹ دی اینڈ آف دس تھرٹی منٹس شیڈیول یو ول ریئلائز ہاؤ امپارٹنٹ دس ٹاپک ہیز بین دس ٹاپک ایز یور اویئر از ٹائٹلڈ انٹرویو اسکلس اینڈ اٹ از بیسڈ آن block one spoken english of the second year undergraduate english course that is the general english course meant for the second year students of ba bsc and bcom now you might have several questions you might want to know what we are doing with interview skills why have we taken a topic that has got something to do with spoken english perhaps you have a question like this why are interview skills important is that a question that is bothering you well right now when you're just in the second year of the ug program perhaps you may not find this significant but remember you are in the undergraduate course with the main aim of taking up something at a later stage by the time you come to the final year by the time you graduate from the university you will be ready to take up a job and Will just your certificate get you a job? No, you will have to first cross an important hurdle and that hurdle is the interview. The interview has an important role to play to get you a job. And to do the interview well, you have to develop certain skills which are very important. And so you see, interview skills play an important role. There might be another question that might be troubling you. How is a job interview different? Well, yes, there are different kinds of interviews. An interview is an exchange of ideas. There might be an interview of one person. There might be uh, an interview of a group of people. But a job interview is different in the sense that it specifically aims at assessing the candidate and his worthiness for the job that has been notified. So you see, employability is an important issue at stake. And in today's highly competitive world, it is very important that you do your job interview well so that you can get a very good job. Now let us look at another question. What is the role of spoken English in job interviews? The answer to this will tell you why in an English lesson we are talking about interview skills. Well. You might be studying through any medium of instruction. The medium of instruction could be Urdu, as in your case, it could be Hindi, Telugu, Marathi or any of the languages. You will gain a lot of knowledge through your mother tongue. But when you appear for a job interview, invariably the job interview will be in English. So when you answer the questions posed to you in the interview, 
you will have to use good English, not just good English, but correct English. So, remember to brush up block 1, the spoken English part of the general English course, so that you improve your speaking skills and thereby your good uh, hand at spoken English will help you to do the job interview very well. Now, generally when we go for an interview, it opens with a very, very ordinary remark. Generally, the greeting, you enter the room, you will have the selection committee seated before you and you will have to greet them. Either you can say good morning or good afternoon depending on the time of the day. Either you say just good morning or you can say good morning sirs or if there is a lady also as part of the selection committee, it would be advisable if you say good morning madam and sirs or it will be still proper if you can greet them all by saying good morning to you all and as I said at the beginning, it could be good morning or good afternoon. These are more standard ways of greeting people when you go for an interview. The way you greet your friends, the way you greet your family will not be appropriate at an interview. You cannot enter the interview hall, go before the board and say, hi, how do you do? No, that is very informal. You have to be very, very formal. So when you use the opening remarks, be open enough to be very expressive, your voice will express your happiness at meeting the people and in a very formal tone you will greet them all good morning or good afternoon as the case may be. Generally the next thing that follows would be your introduction. Either you would be asked to formally introduce yourself, the question could be please introduce yourself or they can directly pose a question and say what is your name? And then there are various ways of answering this very simple question. Now, if you happen to be Mazaruddin Khan, you will say, this is Mazaruddin Khan. Or if your name is Sayyid Kamaluddin, you can introduce yourself by saying, I am Sayyid Kamaluddin. Or it could be, I am Seema Siddiqa, if your name happens to be Seema Siddiqa. Or you can as well use the sentence, my name is Ashraf Anissa. Any of these sentence structures would be correct they would be formal, you will be introducing yourself by your name. But have you noticed something? Every time I have used the name, I have used the full name. So do not enter the interview hall and when you are asked to give your name, don't simply say I am Mazar, I am Kalam, I am Seema. Remember to give your full name. It is the first time you are introducing yourself to the committee and it is advisable that you use your full name. Now. In general, the next question that could be asked could be something to do with your qualifications. What have you done? What have you passed? What are your qualifications? Or tell us something about the recent examination that you have passed. Now, whatever be the question that is posed to you, there are various ways of answering. Remember to frame your sentence in correct English and that is enough. You can say, I have recently passed the BA examination. If you happen to be a graduate of BA or you can introduce yourself thus, I am a graduate from Urdu University. You have given your qualification, you have also given the name of your university. Or you can specify what discipline you belong to and you can answer, I am a science graduate from Urdu University. Or you can very well in very simple English say, I passed BCom last year. Now, whatever be the mode of your answer, the answer should be precise to the question. The question was about your qualification. Remember to give the qualification. I have recently passed the BA examination or you can say I am a graduate from the university or as I said, I am a science graduate from the university or I passed BCom last year. Now, another very general common question asked in an interview would be about your work experience. The board could ask you, do you have any experience? And if you have, you will say, yes, I do have. Where have you worked before? Or the question could be, what is your job experience? Whatever be the question, the answers are again very simple, very easy to give. If, for example, you have worked as an accountant, you can say, I served as accountant in a private firm for two years. 
if you're still working in that company, you can say, I'm working for a multinational company since 2006. This indicates that even today, you are still with that company. Or if you have some teaching experience, you can always say, I have two years of teaching experience in a school. So you see, whatever your job experience is, give it in brief. You need not give the complete name of your company for the first question. Later, they may want to know where have you worked, what was the name of the company, in which school do you teach. Then you may add the name of the school, the institute, the company or the organization. But to be on a safer ground, give your answer as briefly as possible. But remember, it should be pointed, it should answer the question that has been posed. Let us move further. The interview board asks you, where do you stay, where do you reside or where do you come from? The answer is again very simple. Say, I stay at Mehdi Patnam, I come from Patiala, I reside in Adoni or I am a native of Bidar. Remember to substitute the place name by the place that you belong to. I have only used Mehdi Patnam, Patiala, Adoni or Bihar or Bidar as simple examples. Remember to substitute the place name by the place that you belong to. These sentences are again very easy, very simple and it should not be difficult for you to frame a good sentence there. Your hobbies may come next. The board may want to know if you have certain hobbies. What do you do in your pastime? Do you have any hobbies? How do you spend your leisure time, etc. Then suppose you play football. Your answer would be, I prefer to play football or you can go on to say, I love playing basketball or I enjoy cycling or I am interested in gardening. Now whatever be your hobby, you simply have to say something about it. If you are asked to introduce yourself in a few words and now the interview board will not put you individual questions, they will not ask you what is your name, what are your qualifications, where have you worked before, where do you come from, they just ask you please introduce yourself. And then you need a little paragraph ready there. You will have to tell about everything, your name, your qualification, your experience and your place. So imagine you are Anwaruddin, a commerce graduate with experience as an accountant. And if you are asked to, experience, uh, to uh, introduce yourself, this is what you will say. I am Anwaruddin. I am a commerce graduate from Urdu University. I have worked as accountant in a private firm for two years. My native place is Adoni, but I am currently placed at Kakatiya Nagar. So you see, it is not too much of hard work. Before you go for the interview, have a little paragraph, a paragraph running into three to four lines. That is more than enough. Write down your name, your qualifications, your experience, your uh, place of residence. If you wish, you may even add your hobbies or one or two other statements to introduce yourself. But if you falter, if you go to the interview hall and if you think, um, well, I am Anwaruddin, I, um, I passed graduation, uh, mm, you are not passing a good impression. So before you even uh, think of applying for a job, this is the stage when you are still in the second year. Practice these small sentences, these small paragraphs will go a long way in your career. If the interview board wants to know something about your family, again be prepared. The board is not actually interested in your family. They are just trying to test how good you are perhaps at English, do you have enough confidence, etc. So start talking about your family. Now this is just a model statement. We are a small family. I live with my parents and younger sister. My father is a teacher and my mother is a homemaker. You can substitute this with some information about your own family. Here I have said about a very small family where the candidate lives with parents and a younger sister, the father is a teacher and the mother is a homemaker. Whatever it is, put your sentences down together and highlight only that which is important. You don't have to go into too many details about your family. If you are asked to give the reason for your job option, what would you do? 
This is generally a question that is put in almost all interviews. Why did you opt for this job? Why do you think you want this job? Was there any special reason for having opted for this uh, profession or job or whatever? <coughs> and have an answer ready. You can answer in something like this. I've already worked as accountant for two years, but in a private firm. Having gained the experience, I think I can serve a government organization as this one better. Now this particular reason will be suitable if you are already working in a private firm and the interview is for a government organization. Then you have a very good justification. You do not wish to continue in a private firm, you would rather serve the government. So you have stated how you not only have some experience that makes you fit for the job, but the better reason for moving over that the present one is a private firm and you think you can better serve a government organization. Let us look further. My educational background and the previous job experience make me feel that I perfectly satisfy the conditions for this job. Moreover, this is a reputed organization and it would be a pleasure to be associated with it. This is a much better way of putting across your reason for having opted for the particular job in question. You are justifying your stand, you are talking about your educational background, your job experience and you are displaying your confidence when you say, I feel I perfectly satisfy the conditions for this job. Moreover, you are instilling confidence in the selection committee by telling them that theirs is a reputed organization and an outsider like you will find a lot of pleasure to be associated with it if you are selected for the job. So again, a little hard work, one or two or maybe three sentences put down now to serve you in future. Now suppose you are working as a teacher. You will explain why you want to join this particular school and your answer could be something like this. I have always wanted to be a teacher. Therefore, immediately after passing BSc, I joined the B.Ed program. I passed it with distinction. I also have a flair for teaching and I love being with children. Therefore, I decided to apply for the post of teacher in your reputed school. Look at the different reasons that you have given in one statement after another justifying why you have opted for this job. One, your desire to be a teacher. Then, how you have used your qualifications suitably. You have done your uh, graduation, BSc in this case, and immediately you went in for the teacher tra training program, that is the B.Ed. And then, you have passed it with distinction. You are indirectly stating how you are suitable for the job. And then, you have also said how you love to teach and how you love being with children. And you are justifying your candidature for this particular post. So these are all ways of impressing your prospective employers and you can do this better with good spoken English skills. Now suppose you are asked a question like, if you are selected to this job, what will be your contribution or how will you contribute to the organization if you are selected? Hmm, you will have to get your words correct again. The selection committee has not told you you are selected. They just want to look at your reaction. If they select you, what would you do for them? There are various ways in which you can answer. I will give you a couple of them. I will sincerely work toward the growth and progress of the organization and contribute the best of my abilities to its enrichment. I will help strengthen its resources and remain dedicated to my profession. Very well said, you are committing yourself to the organization, you are talking about your sincerity, you are talking about contributing to the growth and progress of the organization, you are trying to show how you will strengthen the resources of the organization, at the same time you are also committing yourself to remain dedicated to whatever your profession is. Or other reasons for whatever your contribution would be uh, to the organization. Now suppose uh, it is a school and you are asked what would be your contribution to the school if you are selected. Perhaps your answer could read something like this. 
My love for children will help me to maintain a bond and lead to good discipline. I personally think that education is refinement and by being a role model, I will attempt to bring further glory to the institute. So look again how you are impressing the selection committee. You are telling them that as a teacher, you have love for children and that could help maintain a very good bond and also help maintain good discipline in the school. And you are adding one or two extra points when you talk about education as being refinement and how as a teacher you will be a role model and bring more glory to the institute. The selection committee sometimes may want to know about your positive qualities. Now generally none of us wants to talk about ourselves. We don't want to talk to others about the good things that we have. But then again the selection committee wants to hear it from you. What do you consider as positive qualities in yourself? Think before going every person has a number of positive qualities. I may be giving a few examples here but you think what are your own positive qualities and put them down in simple sentences to use them for any, for any interview. If you love work you can say I am a workaholic and I am not aggressive. I am open to new challenges. I can take both the ups and downs in my stride. I am optimistic and like socializing. Well, well, too many good qualities have been presented here. You can give one positive quality, you can give more than one positive quality. But remember, be sincere, be truthful. These should be qualities that are inherent in your nature. Otherwise, don't state them. You need not go and say, I'm a workaholic if you're basically a lazy person. Or if you're afraid of challenges, don't say, I'm open to new challenges. Whatever are your positive qualities, list them down, two, three. That should be enough to satisfy the selection committee. They will not leave you with your positive qualities. They might want to know if you have any negative qualities. Now that is again a very tricky question. If they say, what are your weaknesses? Mm -mm, nobody wants to talk about weaknesses. And surely not before the selection committee. Then how do you make up for it? State the negative qualities, if any, but in such a way that they can be turned into positive qualities. Look at these two examples. I cannot tolerate indifference to work. I dislike laziness. Well, they may sound negative qualities. If you cannot tolerate somebody's indifference to work, it could be in a very negative quality. But it is a negative quality that will impress the selection committee because it will indirectly show that you are a person who has a lot of dedication towards work. Similarly, if you say I hate or dislike laziness, it may sound very negative. But again, it is a negative quality that will impress the selection committee. A person who dislikes laziness will himself not be lazy and you are sending the correct feelers to the selection committee. Let us look at certain specific question and answers that you may have to encounter in an interview. Suppose a question posed to you is, what were your optional subjects? Answer, whatever be your optional subjects, lay them down. I studied botany, zoology and chemistry or whatever your optional subjects were. And if the question is, what was your second language? You need not say in a full sentence, my second language was Hindi. You can simply say Hindi or Telugu or Marathi or Urdu or Arabic or whatever your second language was. If you are asked to tell something about your reading habits, what kind of books or magazines do you like to read? The answer could be, I prefer science fiction. The magazines that I generally read are on current affairs sports and business. Here again, be faithful, be sincere. If these are the books you read, tell. If these are the magazines you read, tell. Otherwise, if you are not into reading, you can very well say, sorry, I am not into reading or list the magazines and books that you read. But be faithful, be sincere. Every answer that you give may prompt the selection committee to probe you further and you should have the answers ready. What is your ambition in life? All of us have some ambition or the other and answer according to your ambition. My ambition is to become whatever, a doctor, an engineer, a teacher, an accountant. But remember, 
allow that ambition to be closer to the job that you're applying for. If you're applying for a job of a teacher and if you say, my ambition is to become a doctor, it does not go too well. Or my basic aim is to excel in anything I do. Or you can say, my ambition is to go into space, if that in fact is your ambition. There is another important factor that we should look into and that is avoiding wrong usage. Now suppose the question is, as you can see there, what is your name? Do not say myself, I am. It is grammatically wrong. Never introduce yourself by saying myself. We have already told you how to introduce yourself. Do that. And if the question is where do you live? Do not say I am coming from Bhongir or whatever be the place of the name. We have also told you how to introduce your place name. And then don't go around talking like this. I am liking very much to do this job. Wrong English. I does all the work given to me. Hmm, grammatically wrong sentence. I am not finding anything satisfying in the previous job. Not only is this last sentence grammatically wrong, it also reflects badly about your attitude. Don't say anything negative about your previous job even if you didn't like it. Think only of the positive aspects. Now interviews are not always face to face. Especially in the modern times, interviews are held over telephones also. So you will have to learn some telephone conversation skills also. Now somebody from the company will call you and say, I would like to speak to, they will ask for you by name. And if you have received the telephone, you will say yes, speaking, that is yes, the person that you have asked for is online. And then that person says, I am so and so from so and so company. Greet that person, you know you have applied there. Good morning, sir, madam. And then if they mention you, what particular post uh, you have applied for, or perhaps they may say that you have applied in our company. So yes, I had applied for the post of lab assistant. And then the questions follow one after the other. What examination did you pass? I passed BSc last year. In what division? No need to give full sentences, simply say in first division. Yes, I have worked as lab assistant before. I am familiar with the duties. And why have you left your previous job? Because the pay package was too low and the timings were inconvenient. I had to do work from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. if they ask you about the timings of your previous organization. What were your optionals? No need to give full sentences. Simply say botany, microbiology and chemistry. Uh, our company will offer you so much. Yes, I am satisfied with the pay package offered by your company. Uh, you will have to be with us between 10 to 5. Is that fine? Your answer would be, yes, I guess 10 to 5 should be fine. And then th whoever is at the other end will either give you another date when you can meet or will close with some remarks and then be gracious enough to say, thank you, it was nice talking to you. And before you put down the receiver, say goodbye. What do you do when you are stuck for answers in an interview? There may be times when you don't know the answer. Then simply say, excuse me, I did not understand the question or apologize, I am sorry, I do not know the answer or pardon me, will you please repeat the question? Be polite, but if you don't know anything, feel free to say you do not know it. There are a few things that you should remember for any interview. Be natural. Don't put on any appearance. Speak in a neutralized accent. Avoid American or British accent. Speak simple English, but use short sentences and remain polite throughout. Have confidence in yourself. Maintain a good and erect posture. Talk clearly and audibly. You want the selection committee to hear what you're telling. And while you're still in college, develop a decent dress sense. The dress code also plays an important part in any interview. Present a neat and clean image. If you have imbibed all these qualities that we've been talking to you about so far, you are definitely going to be successful at the interview. And I hope this session has been fruitful. And I look forward to some uh, comments and suggestions from you. While I wish you good luck, 
I would like to hear from you. Write to us at the following address. The Director, Directorate of Distance Education, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, Gachibauli, Hyderabad, 500032. Goodbye and take care.